Kellogg Store, Joan Davis, proprietor, Jack Haley, manager. Rebroadcast especially for you soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen. Now, here's the star and proprietor of the Village Store, Joan Davis. <laughs> boys. My, you just, you just don't know how excited I am to be here at Mitchell Field. And oh, what a thrill I got when your commanding officer told me uh, the wonderful tribute that you boys had paid me when you voted me Miss Washout of 1940. Tonight, the modern air is accompanied by Merle Kendrick and his orchestra sing a brand new lyric to the popular instrumental favorite, Holiday for Strings. When I see you smile at me, I hear a haunting melody, and I surrender to the tender thrill it brings. A holiday for strings, sweet music all around me. Softly as the song begins, I hear a host of violins, but can it only be my lonely heart to sing? A holiday for strings, because your love is found me. Through the night, a last song fills the air. Telling me I'm yours completely Breathe the sigh A newborn rhapsody When you are close to me That's music Never heard such lovely music When you're gone it fades away But when we meet I hear it play As from above a song of love comes sweet and clear Whenever you are near The angels play a holiday Yes, tonight Joan Davis is at Mitchell Field with Jack Haley and the whole gang. They're ready to put on a show to entertain the boys. But first, let's turn back the clock 24 hours. Let's look in on the 20th Century Limited, eastbound for New York, where we find Joan and Jack making their way to the observation car. Oh, gee, just think, Jack, tomorrow morning we'll be in New York. Aren't you excited? I sure am. <laughs> Tickets, please. Tickets. Where's your ticket, lady? I'll have to punch it. My dear man, I'm Joan Davis, the Hollywood glamour girl. My face is my ticket. You must have done an awful lot of traveling, lady. Your ticket looks well punched. <laughs> Why, he has a lot of nerve. You know, I've got a good mind to tell him... Ah, what... forget it, Joanie. Look, have you decided what we're going to do to entertain the boys at Mitchell Field? Well, gee, I don't know, Jack. Uh, what do you think the boys would like to see? I got a suggestion. Why don't you do some famous love scene? Why, that's a great idea, Jack, and you'll play the love scene with me. I'll play... Me and my big, fat suggestion. <laughs> well, what's wrong with playing a love scene with me? I don't know, Joni. On second thought, you're not the lover type. You don't have the voice for it. Who has? And I have a wonderful voice. Why, back home, I'm known as the Hollywood Siren. In fact, the mayor wouldn't think of holding an air raid drill without me. <laughs> Just a second. Just the same, I'm not going to do it. Uh, Jack, look at this handsome guy coming up the aisle. Mm, he's got his eye on me. He's looking me over from head to foot. I wonder why. He's probably trying to figure out what you are. <laughs> well, you know, he'll probably try to flirt with me. If he does, I'll show him a thing or two. I know how to deal with these mashers. Uh, here he comes now. I'll close my eyes and pretend I don't see him. <laughs> you can open them now. He passed you right by. He did. I knew I should have brought along my portable booby trap. Uh, hey, you, come back here. Who, me? Oh, um, sorry, miss. Now, it's too late to apologize. You should know oh, better look, than... Oh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, miss, uh, miss... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Joan Davis. I don't blame you for being sorry. <laughs> told you that time, Joni. Say, Bud, you got a sense of humor. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jack Haley. How are you? I'm George Rath. Uh, uh, who'd you say you are? George Rath. George Rath? Boing! <laughs> oh, brother, you don't have to lower the lifeboats, Captain. I found myself a Rath. <laughs> Maybe 
I can get him to do the love scene with me. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Raff, we're going to Mitchell Field to entertain the boys. How would you like to go along with us? Well, that depends. Uh, what kind of entertainment are you going to do? Well, I was thinking of doing a love scene with some handsome man. You could do it with me. Me? Do a love scene with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I realize it makes you happy, but you don't have to get hysterical about it. Look, you don't seem to quite realize what men think of me. Go ahead, Jack. Tell them, what, uh, tell them about that offer I had to appear on Broadway. Yeah, I just sent a picture of Joni to New York, and they want her immediately. She's going to appear in a spot on Broadway where she'll be the center of all eyes. Really? What do they want her for? A floating target in a shooting gallery. <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Ramp? They do want me on Broadway. I'm quite a dramatic actress. You are? Oh, definitely. In fact, I've been compared to the Barrymores. They say I act like Ethel. Mm, too bad. You look like Lionel. <laughs> Why, Georgie, how can you say a thing like that to me when I feel the way I do about you? What are you getting at? Well, I've always admired you. I love your flashing black eyes, your Grecian nose, and your hair. <laughs> You're so different from Jack You know, you have such manly appeal What do you mean? I have just as much manly appeal as he has In fact, a little while ago Three cute whacks passed me on the way to the diner Oh, they asked you to join them for dinner? No, they asked me to join the whack <laughs> uh, Speaking of dinner Oh, I, uh, uh, I'm terribly sorry uh, Haven't you had your dinner yet? No well, would you like to go up to the dining car? I'd love to. Mm, good. When you get up there, tell the waiter to send me back a salami sandwich. <laughs> oh, uh, we're pulling into a station. I, I wonder where we are. Me too. Say, Joni, you're near the window. Would you mind sticking your head out and seeing what town we're in? Oh, no, not me. Why not? Well, the last time we went through, I stuck my head out the window and some wise guy hung three mailbags on my nose. <laughs> Well, uh, as long as this is the station, I think I'll get off and take a walk. Uh, George, are you going to go to Mitchell Field with us? Well, not unless you can think of something better than... Uh, we'll be right back, Joni. Oh, gee, i got to think of some way to get Georgie to go with us. Now, if I could only get him to Mitchell Field... Oh, there you are, Miss Davis. Oh, hiya, Plimpy. Oh, hiya. Oh, Miss Davis. <laughs> I'm so excited. George Raff just squeezed past me in the vestibule and smiled at me. Why, well, don't believe it, Plimpy. You don't believe he smiled at me? No, I don't believe anybody could squeeze past you in a vestibule. <laughs> Miss Davis, mm -hmm. I'd have you know Mr. Raff actually flirted with me. Although I must admit he mistook me for someone else. Some girl named Galento. <laughs> I see what you mean. Uh, how'd you sleep last night, Blimpy? Oh, Miss Davis, just thinking about New York, I, I got so excited I couldn't sleep a week. Well, I couldn't sleep either, Blimpy. Those Pullman noises nearly drove me crazy. Clickety-click, clickety-click, all night long. What did you do about it? I rolled three naturals, broke up the crab game, and went to bed. <laughs> Couldn't sleep. But, Miss Davis, why didn't you try counting sheep? I did. I not only counted sheep, I sheared them, dyed the wool, and knitted myself a sweater. <laughs> but when I saw how I looked in that sweater, I woke up screaming. <laughs> well, if you have any trouble tonight, Miss Davis, I can give you some sleeping tablets. I got them when we stopped at Lips the Ante. What's the lady? Yips the Ante. Yips, 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 yips. Tally ho, man, the old hound has treed another fox. <laughs> Little Lambsy Dibby, a kiddly dibby too wouldn't do. Oh, Mersey Dose and Dosey Dose and Little Lambsy Dibby, a kiddly dibby too wouldn't do. 
If the words seem queer and funny to your ear, a little bit jumbled and jivey, say mares eat oats and does eat oats and little lambs eat ivy. Oh, mares eat oats and does eat oats and little lambs eat ivy. A kiddly divey too wouldn't do. Oh, a kiddly divey too wouldn't do. Now the bell in the little red schoolhouse is ringing it. All of the kids in the schoolhouse are singing it. They think it's pretty, but they drive us crazy when they all sing this song. The bells they don't, they don't, they don't, and little bells they don't. Until the cows come home All right, move Now beat it <laughs> Miss Davis Well, Dave Street Hiya, kid Miss Davis Why do I have to wear a short pants And say da, da Every time the conductor passes That sword will only cost her half fair Yeah, but I look very silly in short pants I won't stand for it Quiet or I'll make you wear diapers And save the whole fair <laughs> <laughs> You know, kid When we get to New York I might be able to pull a few strings And get you an audition To sing at Carnegie Hall How would you like that? At Carnegie Hall? Gee, I'd love it if I can get an audition there, I'd sing with gusto and fervor. Stop bringing those Italian baritones into your act. Go ahead and sing along, kid. Okay, Miss Davis. I'll be seeing you for the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. In that small cafe The park across the way The children's carousel The chestnut tree The wishing well I'll be seeing you summer's day in everything light and gay I'll always think of you that way I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing you. Oh, that was swell, kid. If you want it for anything, Jack and I'll die. So am I. Boy, I hope the dining car isn't crowded. Today I got in line for lunch, and by the time I got to a table, I was just in time for dinner. Yeah? What you have for dinner? Breakfast. <laughs> oh, who's the diner? Gee, and it isn't very crowded either. Say, there's George Ramsey's all alone. Let's join him. Hiya, Georgie. Where have you been? We've been looking all over for you. Do you mind if we join you? Why, not at all, Miss Davis. In fact, I'd like to buy your dinner. Oh, but... <laughs> okay, uh, you talk me out of it. Well, uh, Miss Davis, have you decided what we're going to do at Mitchell Field? Do? Oh, uh, I'm going to be a test pilot. You? A test pilot? Well, I'm testing those pilots. <laughs> ah, it's going to be great to be around planes again. What do you mean, again? Well, I don't want to brag, but I used to be quite a famous pilot in my day. You were? Certainly. I'll never forget my first plane. She was a sweet little job. A Gypsy Rose Lee model. Gypsy Rose Lee? Yeah, you should have seen her take off on the runway. <laughs> oh, Georgie, won't you change your mind about going to the field with us? You know, I thought of a great act for us to do. We'll get some chorus girls in scanty costumes. Oh, no, I don't think the flyers would want to see that. No? <laughs> well, I'll hop out of bubble 
dancers. No, Joni, that's not for them. They want something military. <laughs> All right, we'll get Captain Elgar to blow up the bubbles. <laughs> Joni, those men aren't interested in women, are they, George? Nah, they don't want to see girls. Uh, pardon me, how long have you two guys been dead? Oh. oh, I've got an idea. Those guys want to see something manly, like a boxing match. That's it, George. We'll put on a real fight for them. Yeah, we'll give them a slug. That's all right, Jack. Okay, but uh, who are we going to get to fight, Joni? Joni? <laughs> Well, I was thinking uh, of the two of us fighting, or, or are you afraid? Me afraid? Don't be silly. I used to be a boxing champ, and I was pretty good, too. Within six months, I beat Kid Nelson, Kid Donovan, Kid Schwartz. I only lost one fight, and that was because my manager double-crossed me. What did he do? He ran out of kids and matched me with a full-grown man. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, no, there'll be no fighting. It's much too brilliant. No fighting. It's... Well, if you think of something else, I'll be in my compartment. See you later. Oh, isn't he handsome? He has such a smooth olive complexion. You know, I once had a boyfriend with an olive complexion. The only trouble was his nose looked like the pimento. <laughs> Say, Joni, look. Here comes Penny Cartwright. Oh, that Penny. I don't know why we're bringing her to New York anyway. Now, don't be like that, Joni. Try to be nice to her. Well, why should I? She had the nerve to say that I'm stupid and uneducated. Well, you are, Miss Davis. I am not. I'll have you know I'm self-educated. Self-educated? Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly are very smart. Well, naturally. What could I learn from a dope like me? <laughs> Miss Davis, when we get to Mitchell Field, I do hope you'll know how to conduct yourself. Well, don't worry about me. I've been army camps before, you know. In fact, the last one I visited, they drove me all over the place in a jeep. Boy, I'll never forget that ride. Why? Was it rough? Rough? After three hours in it, I became a member of the Standing Army. <laughs> oh, Miss Davis, I can hardly wait to get to Mitchell Field. You see, I have a date with a certain sergeant. A certain sergeant? Who ever heard of an uncertain sergeant? <laughs> you will appeal to the men at Mitchell Field. Well, how can you say that? The boys loved me. Only last week I was at Santa Ana, and when the boys heard I was coming, they turned out in a body to see me. But they turned around and went right back. <laughs> what? They didn't like the body I turned out in. <laughs> well, I really have to run along now. See you later, Penny. So long, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Penny beautiful, Joni? You know, when we get to New York, she'll probably get a job as a model. A model? Oh, that's nothing. When I get to New York, I'm going to be a showgirl. Why, right now, men look at me and admire me. In fact, they all say I'm a beautiful doll, a great big beautiful doll. <laughs> and you know why I'm a beautiful doll? Well, because of my poise and carriage. To acquire this carriage, I walked around for three weeks with the Encyclopedia Britannica on my head. Now when I stroll down the street, kids point at me and say, Hey, Joey, look, there goes Flat Top. <laughs> and, and the other day I attended an audition they were holding to choose showgirls for the different nightclubs. If you had a Latin-type face, they put you in the Copacabana. If you had a figure like a debutante, they put you in Cafe Society. <laughs> My legs are what attracted them. <laughs> I open next week at the Stork Club. <laughs> and the producer suggested that I get a glamorous name with a catchy title after it. For instance, there's Gertie La Gertie with a figure that's flirty. And Chi Chi La Chi Chi with a figure that's peachy. They got one for me, too. Joni La Joni with a face like baloney. <laughs> you know, we showgirls get quite a few dates, and the other night I went out with a wonderful man. He was nice. He had a cute little wax mustache. Where well, he ever found a wax with a mustache, I'll never know. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was from Texas, and after one look at me, he asked me to come with him and settle down on the prairie. <laughs> I said, what do I look like, a gopher? <laughs> Too bad he answered that. <laughs> uh, but he really, he really must have liked me because he used his influence and got me a big part in a Broadway play. I have the title role in The Voice of the Turtles. Mm -hmm. And it's a hard part, too. For three acts, I just stand there with my head pulled in. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm a gay, gay,
This will be burning on Calm and happy and bright In my dreams Your face will flower Darkness of the night Like the light The morning before me Oh, angel Watching o'er me This will be my shining hour Till I'm with you George, I think it's swell of you to rehearse this vaudeville sketch with us. Oh, I'm glad you found something we can do. And if you like it, you'll go to Mitchell Field and appear in it with us? Sure. Oh, Miss Davis, here I am, all ready to rehearse your vaudeville act. Well, that's swell, Blimpy. Now, you know the setting, George. Uh, you and Jack are two air cadets, and Blimpy and I are two beautiful girls named Maisie and Gertie, who were sent over to entertain you soldiers. Uh, what do you say to that? Oh, brother, Sherman was right. <laughs> Uh, George, you can have either Blimpy or me as your girl. You have your choice. Well, this isn't a choice. This is an ultimatum. <laughs> okay. Tell them all about it. Yeah, I'll tell them all about it. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. Curtain music. <laughs> I'm all mixed up here. <laughs> well, Gertie, here we are at Mitchell Field. I understand there's uh, nothing but handsome pilots here. Oh! Cute man in uniform. He's got three stars on his shoulder. I wonder what that means. <laughs> Please don't display your ignorance. If he has three stars on his shoulder, it only means one thing. He has three sons in the service. <laughs> uh, here come two soldiers now. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello, girls. Girls, brother, with eyesight like that, how'd you ever get into the Air Force? <laughs> oh, Maisie. <laughs> Here's a cute one. <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> We could have a lot of fun together. How would you like to go out with me? Well, I don't know. I never had a date with a blockbuster before. <laughs> oh, Joni, how much did you pay for this sketch? Thirty-five cents. Why? Well, don't look now, but you got change coming. <laughs> never mind. Read your next line. All right. Look, girls, thanks for a lovely evening. We had a swell time, but we're kind of tired. So why don't you beat it? That line I like. I like that. <laughs> well, uh, I suppose you girls came out here to go up in a plane with one of us army flyers. Oh, no, we wouldn't do that. I went up with an army flyer once, and when he got me up there, he, he had the nerve to try to kiss me. He did? What did you do to him? Well, I fought and I fought. And what happened? Uh, well, well, nothing would stop the army air corps. <laughs> uh, well, George, how do you like the sketch so far? Will you do it with us at Mitchell Field? Oh, is this the way it's going to be done? That's right. In that case, no. But, Georgie, don't forget those guys are expecting us. Oh, but, Joni, don't forget those guys have guns. <laughs> hey, Joni, look, we're pulling into the station. Grand Central Station, all out. Okay, let's get started. Great. Oh, Joni, we're in New York. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, it sure is. Wait a minute. Uh, tell him to turn around. We got to go back to California. Joni, what are you talking about? You heard me. We got to go back. I forgot something. What did you forget? I forgot to notify my draft board and my change address. <laughs> Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, and you'll shoo the blues away. When cares pursue you, hallelujah, gets you through the darkest day. Satan lies awaiting and creating skies of gray. But hallelujah, hallelujah, helps to shoo the clouds away. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and you'll do the blues away. When cares pursue ya, hallelujah, get you through the darkest day. Oh, Satan, 
Lies awaiting and creating skies of gray. But hallelujah, hallelujah helps to shoo the clouds away. Helps to shoo the clouds away. broadcast of the Village Store is a presentation of the Armed Forces Radio Service.